Hi, my name is Connor Long. I am a fourth year veterinary student and I've been keeping reptiles and amphibians now for 23 years actually, most of my life. And I've been keeping live plants with those uh, animals like off and on since I started, but it's really only been the last couple of years that I've really gotten into bioactive vivariums and, and, and building backgrounds and, and kind of complicated setups with a lot of different types of live plants. And I've gotten a fair amount of questions from people saying, you know, hey, um, what type of plant should I use? I'm not very good at keeping plants alive. What are some good, easy beginner plants? What kind of plants are you using? So I thought I'd make a video addressing my like top five species of plants that I really like to use in setups that I think would be suitable for a beginner. So before we get into the list, I want to mention that growing plants in a vivarium should be fairly easy. Plants need light, water, nutrients, and time to acclimate. In a vivarium setting, they should be able to get their nutrients from your substrate, leaf litter, and animal waste. If you have a properly set up drainage layer, then you shouldn't have much trouble with water levels either. Generally speaking, most tropical plants like to be uniformly moist but not soggy. Thus, I think most people have difficulty with plants because they either do not give them adequate time to acclimate before placing them into a setup with animals, or because they do not provide adequate light for the enclosure. Generally, I would give plants a minimum of two to four weeks to acclimate to a setup before adding your animals. As for lighting, most tropical plants require medium lighting, which will be a minimum of 75 foot candles, with 200 to 500 foot candles preferred. I check my foot candle values with the light meter I purchased online. All right, back to the top five list. And so number one has to be golden pothos. And pothos is great. Pothos is very versatile. Pothos is very solid. It's hard for an animal to really rip leaves off of pothos or crush it unless it's a, a huge animal. Uh, it can grow in water like it's growing here. It can grow in soil like it's growing here. Both of these were just grown from cuttings when I trim pothos in my enclosures. And it is an aeroid plant. Aeroids are like uh, pothos, monstera, philodendron. Most of them are vining plants and they have a growth pattern where they will grow down from where they sprout in the wild. So a seed will fall, say somewhere in a tree, and then it will grow down into the soil and then it will grow back up. And this is relevant because pothos, you can actually grow in a few different ways based on what you are trying to do with it. So if you have, say, a chameleon, you can affix a pothos plant kind of upwards in the cage, and it will send these cascading vines down with fairly small leaves. And the chameleon can actually climb on those, if it's a, if it's a smaller species anyway. Uh, same with like geckos, right? If you want it to grow upwards and have bigger leaves, it will. If you let it root into your backdrop, or if you use twist eyes to say attach it to some wood, it will actually grow upwards. And as it's growing upwards, it will get larger and larger leaves until uh, they become truly gigantic. Now, you're not going to be able to see a, a truly mature pothos in a vivarian setting, but in the jungle, they grow upwards and these leaves get to be huge. I will, uh, I'll, I'll show an image that I took of a truly mature pothos plant. And so pothos are great because they are versatile. They are hardy. They don't need much light. Um, the plant that I have here grows sort of near a north facing window. According to my light meter, this pothos is receiving five to six foot candles of light at 1 p.m. Despite this extremely low light level, this plant has been surviving for about eight months, even if it hasn't really been growing very much during that time. It's still doing very well despite having no light. I've seen them grow in a clinic that I was working at where uh, it was just under some fluorescent tube kind of office lighting, and it was doing fine and growing up the wall. So Pothos plant does not need much light at all. It is hardy. Uh, it can grow in water. It can grow in pretty dry conditions. It's essentially bulletproof when it comes to maintenance, and it can also be grown as, you know, a downwards vine, or it can be grown upwards with larger leaves. It's a really great plant, and um, I think my local zoo uses it in some of their uh, enclosures as well. So Golden Pothos, number one pick for the beginner. The leaves are large enough to give your animals cover. Um, it's really easy to take care of. It's great. The only downside to pothos is that most aeroids contain calcium oxalates, which are a mild at physical irritant if eaten. Pothos is not reported as being particularly toxic to reptiles. Still, care should be taken if used with uh, species that like to eat plants. Number two would have to be creeping fig. 
and Creeping Fig is a vine that will grow up your backdrop. And it is used frequently in landscaping, so it is available at most garden centers, which is convenient. Um, it has a propensity to, when it takes off, really kind of take over the cage, so you do need to turn it back, but it's pretty easy to take care of if it gets proper lighting, and it can also grow in, in pretty wet, pretty dry conditions. I mean, I live in uh, the Sacramento area. I grew up in Sacramento, California, and during the summer it can get to be like 115, um, and my parents' house has creeping fig growing outside on the walls in full sun. And it's fine, it survives all year long with just some uh, sprinkler action. So it's, it's a really hardy plant and it looks really good in setups. And number three, I would say Neoregelia bromeliads. Now these are pretty commonly used by dart frog keepers, so anybody who has exposure to uh, the kind of the world of bioactive vivariums will already know Neoregelia bromeliads, but they come in a lot of different colors. They can come in, in bright red, they can come in tiger stripes, they can just be green. Um, they can be small, they can be large, and they are pretty hardy. They like a lot of light, but they don't need a ton of light. They will uh, color up better if you keep them kind of upwards in the enclosure towards the light source. But they work really well and they look good. They look kind of like having flowers, but you don't need to deal with trying to get a plant to flower over and over again. So Neurogelia bromine heads are, are pretty great too. Um, then I would say my fourth and fifth favorites, and I'm not really sure which order to put them in, are Peperomia and Pilea plants. Now Peperomia and Pilea are both genuses of plants. They are not a specific species. They're sometimes listed as uh, sort of growing under the same conditions if you're looking at instructions on how to grow house plants, and they do not need a lot of light. I grow some at about 50 foot candles, and that is not much light at all. Uh, I think Pilea do a little bit better in low light conditions in my experience than the Peperomia, but What's so great about Pilea and Peperomia is you get a lot of growth habits and you get a lot of different types of plants in those genuses. Uh, Pilea has some pretty common species that you may already know that's sold in uh, garden centers like aluminum plants, uh, baby tears are another species of Pilea, um, artillery ferns are not real ferns, they're a species of Pilea. I have started using artillery ferns instead of real ferns because I think they're uh, they grow a little bit better in low light conditions and they're easier to propagate, in my opinion. So, Pilea plants are great. Peperomia are similar. I have one Peperomia here, it's a baby rubber Peperomia. And I think it's Peperomia obstifolia or something. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, so forgive me. But this is also just grown from cuttings from my dark frog enclosure. They're really easy to propagate, they're really easy to grow, and they are good for. Uh, keeping with reptiles and amphibians. The issue that you will run into with both Pilea and Peperomia, sometimes it might be a little bit more prevalent with Peperomia, they tend to be kind of succulents and easy to break, but if you have a larger animal uh, that's crawling all over them, Peperomia and Pilea tend to be a bit more fragile and could just be really crushed by an animal if it's in like a path that they want to go back and forth on. So just keep that in mind. But they're really good for dart frogs and smaller animals. I keep them with my chameleon because my chameleon does not go down on the floor of the enclosure as he's an arboreal animal and he doesn't mess with, with either of them. So uh, yeah, Peperomia and Pilea sold pretty frequently, come in a lot of different shapes and colors and they're really easy to take care of. So I hope this has been helpful. Those are my five picks. Um, I think that that's enough to get you started. I can make another video discussing uh, maybe some other picks that didn't quite make this list, if that's something that people are interested in. But overall, uh, Pothos, Ficus, Pumila, the um, Creeping Fig, the Neoregelia bromeliads, and Peperomia or Pilea species would be my choices for somebody starting out with a bioactive vivarium. Thanks for watching and uh, have a good rest of your day.